Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Tall. Before we get into it, got a guest interview today. Before we start, let me plug our sponsors, kicking off with Thompson's, Thompson's Tea. They are the family behind Punjana that have been making tea since the 1800s, which is crazy that at no point they would have stopped. You would think one generation will go, I'll do something else, you know, but no, the Thompson family are just nodders for tea. They were doing it since the 1800s, they'll be doing it for another, however amount of time it was between then and now. In a thousand years time, there'll be nothing but cockroaches, but still the Thompsons family will be serving tea to those cockroaches. And they will drink Punjana, because Punjana, as we know, is Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. Or whatever, you know, let's take the politics out of it, whatever you want to call this part of the, the world, the only thing we can agree on is Punjana's the number one selling tea here. I've got no discount code, I've got nothing to refer you to just to say, keep drinking Punjana, because the Thompson family are so enthusiastic about tea, they've made Punjana and it's, it's the best around. You know we've called out all the other tea brands in the last few weeks and we will continue to do so. Uh, what's a one that isn't maybe local? Who, who haven't we done? Twinings. Twinings? Wankers. <laughs> can play Bellends. Twine it. How much? Oh my God. Twi- you can picture what the Twinings people look like. Very small glasses. Very small. Quite far down the nose. Fucking hate those guys. Um, keep drinking Bunjana. Also, we're sponsored by Manscaped. Look, you know that uh, the pubic hair is on the way out. Manscaped is the number one in men's below the belt grooming. And it's the best way to take care of yourself down there using the, the lawnmower 4.0 because, you know, people are still using very outdated methods for getting rid of their pubic hair. You know there's guys, you know, you know your dad's going down to bonfires the day after the 12th or the 11th. He's going down on the 12th. He is going, he's going down the 13th, which is too long after. And he waits until there's just a wee bit of embers left. And you know what he does? He takes his trousers pants down and he squats down over a bonfire in, ho- in the hope that he can singe. His pu- it's a stupid way to do it. And he needs to stop. He needs to stop. You know, there's all different kind of ways. You know, your dad also, like, he'll, you know, tie a little bit of string to, to his pubes and, like, a ponytail. Tie that to the back of a car and get your mum to, you know, drive down the street. It's a stupid way to do it. What you need is the lawnmower 4.0. Manscaped is all these products for men's grooming. Go on to manscaped.com, use the code Tea with me for 20% off and free shipping. And buy their performance package. They've got ball cleanser, ball deodorant, ball wipes to this is genuinely true I know you might think I'm making this up but that's what it is tea with me for 20% off and free shipping also I've got to plug Patreon which is patreon.com slash tea with me podcast we do a bonus episode on a Monday on Friday we do a live stream and there's all exclusive kind of stuff and the last thing I have to plug I can see Dan's so stressed in case I don't do this is our new mugs now that's a big mug right I don't have small hands that's a, I have massive hands and that's a big strong sturdy mug we spent a long time getting the prototype right, and these are now on sale on Shopify. Will we put the link in the description, Dan? We'll put the link in the description for these brand new mugs. Now that's out of the way. Speak. Jesus Christ, that was for <laughs> Can I go home now? How long was that? <laughs> that's sick. My guest, who seems to not take pubic hair seriously, uh, can I just say this is a lovely cup of Barry's tea? Barry's, the <laughs> finest oh, no, tea no, in no, Ireland. No, no. Tea, lovely, no, no, the Barry no, no, family no. tea. No, if you start, if you start a tea-based podcast <laughs> sponsored by Barry's, it's going to be war. <laughs> My guest today is a returning guest. The last time we did this, it was over Zoom in the middle oh, of... Oh, yes, I in the middle in my of bedroom. Lockdown. Back in those... Uh, you what? Yeah, I was in my bedroom. Oh, were you? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's a very sinister element to it. Well, <laughs> I only saw your top half. I presume there was nothing on the bottom. There was absolutely nothing on the bottom. You know, I was looking up my nether regions and going, "Do I need to shave this, or do I need to trim this, or does it's what's the future?" Going Tim. On? It's, it's the future. Fu- I fellas like me, we just let it go. No, no, let no, it no, go, no. Let it go. Whatever color, gray down there, whatever hats, just let, let it go. Let's do a live sharing, and we'll put it on our Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> There's a website for everybody. <laughs> Tim McGarry is my is my return guest. Tim. I said it to you before you came in here, you're the first guest that has got to the studio on time, in the right place. Everyone just rings me, 
made them in the middle of Hollywood somewhere, I have to walk down and meet them. But that's experience because you just you knew where we were. Yeah, I didn't even use a sat nav around. You told me it's at number 10 High Street. So I looked for number 10 High Street and... Yeah, the, the number there's numbers in the doors. And it's all. beep out our address and in, in edit in case we get murdered. How stupid are your guests? Who have you had on this? <laughs> uh, too many to mention. Too many to mention. Um, Tim, we're back out. You know, we're not doing Zoom stuff. Are you still doing anything on Zoom? Oh, I hate Zoom. No, we're, we're hoping Blame Games back in November. And we're hoping, hoping against hope we get a live audience into the studio because we did a couple of series with the Zoom audience. And so, how was this? Explain me how that works because. Wasn't there like an audience in a cinema or something? That, that was, we did a pilot, we did a pilot episode to see how it worked and we had 90 people in a cinema who were watching it live and then uh, we could hear their, so they were watching it live and laughing and we're recording them and then feeding it back to the studio. Did it work? It did, except there was a two second delay. So you right. made a joke and you went, ha ha ha, ding I go, fuck that joke hasn't landed. And then, <laughs> ah! And you go, oh, jeez, I'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, so it was, it was quite weird, you know, because yeah. you know the way you're, 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 you see it, you make a punchline, you go, ah, <laughs> well, come on, come on, react here. What the fuck, what the fuck? Uh, it was a bit strange, but it did. It, it worked, it, it actually, you know, we, yeah. we kind of got used to it. And then we weren't allowed in the, cin- in the cinema anymore. So we only had a, we had a very tiny sort of, uh, we had a few volunteers basically sitting in a room beside the studio who helped add laughter. And then the Zoom audience, we had about three or 400 people on Zoom, but you can't get a react because everybody's picking their nose or, you know, they're not, they're yeah. not, some of them are muted and all of that. It's all a bit strange. It was, but it was like doing a podcast. That's right. the, the only way we could do it was to go, there is no audience here. There is no energy here. Well, we, like doing we have an audience here. He's called Tony. He's Tony. And he's, he's just sitting over good. there. He's good. He's a great audience member. He's Tony's a good he, looking guy. Is he packing no? his laugh there? Is it? Come on, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> how, how weird is it doing blame, like the likes of a comedy show like Blame Game? To, to no audience it's horrible it's the end of it. it really is awful uh, As, do, do you feel like you burn through stuff quicker because obviously when the audience are laughing yeah. you're pausing and yeah. that sort of thing and you know you know there are jokes that you'd write that are better than other jokes and yeah, you go yeah. you, oh no this is gonna this is really gonna hit them you know they're like that we bet they're and we're here to get this bit and there's gonna be and there's there's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your heart just sinks you go oh that was my best bit <laughs> see see like uh I don't know whether it was 10 years ago or more. Was there a time, am I wrong? Was there a time when you weren't the host of the blame game and then there was this huge public thing of like, we're rioting, get Tim back in the blame game? Because there was guest hosts, right? Yeah, well, thanks for bringing it up. It's a very, very sore point. It's kind of one of those moments in my life that I really don't want to talk about because it's really quite hurtful. And <laughs> it was exactly ten years ago. <laughs> it's the anniversary, <laughs> uh, and I was sacked for no particular reason. But no, there was no public outcry. It was just that all the the there guest hosts pu- they had were a bit shit. No, there was a public outcry. There, there, well, there genuinely was well, because I, I remember there was like a Facebook. It was like a whole Facebook campaign of like, get them back. Well, I certainly didn't start that, okay? <laughs> no, that wasn't me behind that and my phone. No, I, uh, well, it was, it was, they just wanted to mix it up a bit and they, they looked at uh, Have I Got News For You and thought, this is a brilliant idea. We'll get guest hosts like Have I Got News For You do. And the only point is, this is Northern Ireland, not London, where you can get A-listers at the end. You're doing nothing Thursday night, and we end up with May McFetridge. And, you know, and, but it, yeah. it ended up just being like people's uncles. You I, know, it's just like... Like Lambert Opic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it uh, no. Um, but, I, I mean, I loved Have I Got News For You when it was Angus Dayton. That was great. Anytime I rate, because their Twitter account's really good, Have I Got News For You, and anytime I read any of their tweets, which are jokes all the time, yeah. I hear it in Angus Deaton's voice yeah. and like you're the blame game in my head you know what I mean well that's very kind of you but eventually they, they saw their way back and let me back after I think it was, a, yeah, it was about a year or so they did a radio series without me William Crawley did some and uh, it's quite funny speak to speak to Neil and Colin Murphy about William Crawley who just kind of said you can't say that that's that's not true and they go yeah it's a <laughs> Joke, William. <laughs> it's not talk back. You know, where you're allowed to say things that aren't true. Oh, if if we if we fact check people's comedy and stuff, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't have oh, a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> there's woke and there's fact checking as well. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> So how many, you've been doing the blame game for like, what, 15 years? More? Typhoo, actually, no, that's what it is. It's <laughs> Typhoo, I forgot oh. to call them out. Oh, mm, 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 <laughs> lovely. Sorry. <laughs> blame game for how long? 15 years? More? Oh, God, it could be, yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, it could be, yeah, something like that. It's, I've got to tell you, my, my wife, I love my wife, the bits, obviously. Uh, never <laughs> Where's let your this wife, going? <laughs> <laughs> never this let is your not wife, the forum to never, separate never them. Never let your wife <laughs> get involved in your career. Uh, I, was to, I was asked to do a pilot by Jackie Hamilton on a Monday night. So he said, ah, uh, oh, Tim, somebody's phone night, will you do this wee radio pilot for me? And my wife said, oh, Jackie and Jackie Hamilton needs you. He gets you to come down to the club all the time and all of that. Sure, he probably won't even pay you and all of that. I said, no, I'll do Jackie if you ever go down and do this wee, wee radio pilot. And it was a radio pilot for the Blame Game. Right. As was the very first version of it. And uh, there was a pilot done and then there was, it took a few years before it became uh, a proper radio series and stuff. So my wife always said, all right, okay, you're 13 years out of this. <laughs> she said, never give me any advice in my career. Do Just you know who, more. out of interest, do you know who was supposed to do it? Yes, it was supposed to be Dennis Murray, bizarre, <laughs> because it started off as a kind of serious, quasi-serious, not quite a comedy um. show. It was kind of Dennis Murray was supposed to do it. Is he a journalist or something? Or? Yeah, Dennis Murray, the political correspondent for BBC Northern Ireland. You don't know who Dennis Murray is? I feel bad. God. Apologies to all the Dennis Murray fans out oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, yeah, Dennis Murray, yeah, kind of, well, sort of, although he's got quite a troubles journalist, well, he's a troubles journalist and all that, but he's a pretty serious heavy hitter. And then there was a crisis happened in the Peace Proof, somebody gets shot or something, you know, in Northern Ireland, and he decided he couldn't do it. Uh, I have a feeling, Tim, the way things have worked out, I feel well, you might have done it. <laughs> 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 yes, I was going around doing drive-by shootings, and the wife was going, don't bother your arse, don't, let's, let's have go on nowhere why so blame game stupid name anyway <laughs> i remember because the blade like i think i just started doing stand-up when the blame game started yeah probably like that year probably 14 15 years ago and uh it, it was like the thing that as a comedian you wanted to be because you were all stand-ups so it was well, like, this is stand-ups doing jokes on yeah. TV. Well, I'm not. I, well, I came at it a different way. I do a bit of stand-up, but I came at it from a, from a different angle. But yeah, if initially it was quite structured and there were rounds and all sorts of things and there were, you know, past the buck and there was a music round and then... I don't remember the, the music yeah. Oh, no, this is the early stages. Yeah, yeah. And it took a couple of series before we got... The, what's the point of this show? The point of this show is we want to talk about the news and comedians be funny about the news and take all the crap out of it and go, right have four or five topics and go, right, who's to blame for yeah, what are yeah. happening this week? And then it's a free-for-all, basically. Somebody starts it off, does a couple of minutes, and then it's a free-for-all. And it works a treat because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's simple. I mean, you've been to a couple, you've been to recordings, and you've been on it, so we record for about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half, and cut it down to a half hour. And people, the, thing, the things you get all the flipping time, is it prepared? Well, it's TV. Of course, there's a bit of preparation you have to prepare. So, but nobody knows what anybody else is going to say. They don't know my script. Yeah. I don't know what Neil Delamere is going to say. Colin Murphy then comes on the back of Neil Delamere and everybody chips in and stuff. Yeah. So there is, it's, it's preparation. It's prepared to a certain extent. You have to have some. Body, yeah. But, it but is, not to the point. Where it's, it's obviously like having done the radio. It's not scripted. No, but it's, it's more not just scripted. like. Well, my bits are scripted. The, the links are scripted because the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. cameraman needs to know, right, I'm going to this part and then I'm going to... But if you didn't structure it in a way, surely that that recording would go on for five yes. hours, five, and, six hours. And it would, yeah, wouldn't be funny. But <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I did the radio one and I didn't have a good one and I was supposed to do like a bit, I was like, you know, because you'd probably sit down and go, who's got a thing on this? Yeah. And I remember going, I've got a thing on this. And I think my thing was on Conor McGregor. So it was like, and, I, and I'd, I was, I'd never done a panel show, so I was quite nervous. And you were hosting and we did it in... QFT, it, might have been QFT. Was it, some Q, it was a bank or something? No, it was, it was in Belfast. Oh, right, and uh, it was just not like, the the audience just weren't, for some reason it wasn't packed out yeah. and the audience just weren't really into it and I was really nervous and I, I remember like, I've got to have this Conor McGregor bit and I'd practiced it and all this in my head and then you bring up Conor McGregor and then I'm sort of sitting there just like looking at the audience <laughs> and, you're, and you again mentioned Conor McGregor and then you went Shane do you have something to say about Conor McGregor <laughs> I was like oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah I, spontaneous yeah. yeah but when when Blame Game started when I first started doing stand up and Blame Game started I didn't realise that you know the guests who were coming on the comedian guests were well established circuit comedians well known people yeah. I well, in my head I thought well, I do stand-up now because I've done one gig. So yeah. I'd like to get on that. So I emailed Jackie Hamilton and said, uh, and I still have the email, and I said, uh, hi, Jackie, my name's Shane. Um, I've done a couple of gigs. 
you need anyone for the show, let me know, I'll be available. <laughs> and to be fair, he responded and said, fuck off. No, he didn't. He, said, uh, he didn't. He, he said, wouldn't. He's a lovely man. No, he, he said, uh, "He said, oh, thanks very much for the offer. He goes, we're, we're booked up for the series, but keep going yeah. with stand-up. And that's so really nice to get a reply. But even when I got that reply, which was clearly just out of politeness, in my head I was going, I'll probably get on the series. Like, he's saying that, but, you know, I'm probably coming on as a guest. And then 13 years later, I did the radio. Well, Michael McIntyre was on it. Michael McIntyre did the radio show. Before, he, Milliken, was, before, she, before he was famous, Sarah Milliken did it. Uh, John Bishop's first ever TV show was The Blame Game. Uh, so we've had a lot, quite a lot of people. You know, Michael McIntyre was uh, very was unknown at the time. Yeah, I was going to say, what makes a good guest on it? Because sometimes you see people with a profile, and it, they just don't click well, with like the panel. I, I I couldn't be a guest on it. I not a stand up. I I yeah, I do. You well, say I, that I, though, well, no, I, I came out a different way. I came out stand up from doing the like, give me head piece and yeah. stuff like that, and writing writing sketches and stuff like that. So I kind of ended up having to do it, but. I couldn't be as spontaneous as Willie as those guys are. I, give me a half an hour one, Conor McGregor, and I'll come back to you with yeah, two, yeah, two yeah. good minutes on, on Conor McGregor. But just through Conor McGregor, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It does take a bit of spontaneity, and it takes natural wit and all of that. And some of the problems with the guests that arrive in the blame game is all the time I get, oh, the show's great, you don't need those English people, they don't get us and all that. Well, they do, they, I mean, they, they, a lot of them are very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to be You need to be on top of your game, you need to have plenty of material, you need to join in, and you need to be open and receptive, and you need to go with the flow and stuff like that. And some English comedians do come over and go, right, well, I've got my bit, I'll say my bit, and I'll shut up. There are some English comedians who in the past who come over and been a bit arrogant about it and thinking this is only a local show, these guys. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll wing it. Go, I'll wing it, and then they find out that in fact we're quite good at what we do <laughs> you can tell sometimes they do like a northern ireland accent and then <laughs> they're looking at the audience like this is all i prepared i was hoping this would get enough you know uh but it, it it's great yeah i mean the fact it's been going for like for for so long and you know you're saying about coming into stand-up from a different way like genuinely like you're one of my favorite comedians here to watch i love watching you do stand-up very good do you yeah yeah I, do you know what, the, what you know one of my favorite sets in like I don't know, the last five years that I've seen, when you did Pugs for Dave and you oh, headlined. Right, right. And, yeah. and, and it was just, it was great. Like, because, you know, you see a lot of stand up and even like your good mates that do stand up, you don't always stay and watch. You know, you're talking to yeah, someone yeah. backstage or like, you know, you're doing class A drugs or whatever. But um, but when you're on stage, I, ma I make sure I, I make sure I watch. All my class A drugs, that night, yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I was just smelling them. I was just smelling them. That's it. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's strange to me that like you don't consider your well maybe you do but like you but you're like a top class headliner well, well, I've, well I've done a couple of one man shows and stuff and I did like that I've done pugs a couple of times for Dave how is Dave is he okay by the way is he Look, he's back in. He's back he's in. Back well, in uh, but I think this weekend he's getting just, out. There's so much money, social services and probation and all waste on that. It's just one man. How much does this man cost the entire welfare? Do you know, what, do you know what's so funny Jeez. about if anyone's aware of this back and forth between you and Dave? What's so funny about it is it just totally came out of nowhere because you did the podcast with Dave to start a lockdown. And we're talking about Dave in general. And you were like, yeah, you know, as long as he's over his, his terrible drug habit. And I phoned Dave because we speak like every single day, a couple of times a day, uh, just about nothing. And uh, I phoned him. He said, how was the podcast? And I said, it was great. I said, Tim did a really funny bit where he, he, he said, you you take all these drugs. And Dave was like, why did he say that? I was like, he just did. And it's been going on for uh, he's about He's in a year denial, and basically. Is what he's in denial. denial. He's, you know, he but, he uh, won't but, accept it, but... But the, pro the you know I think you going public with it helped yep. actually helped them a lot. I think well it's good of you to phone them every day because I think that that'll help ground them you know it'll yeah. help them you know you know because I know those other people need a break as well yeah. the people around them you know so thanks for that thanks for that. Yeah. It got to the point where I remember me and Dave did a podcast together and someone wrote under it like. Uh, yeah, great to see this guy still doing podcast despite his major drug problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's like, no, 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 this isn't good. But but that Pogs gig was was great because I'm sure like you know there's 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 the TV sort of stand up circuit and the one man shows and that sort of thing. But then there is a real good grassroots stand up scene here, and because you do so much TV stuff, you maybe don't get to go to those gigs as often. Yeah. 
So no, that must lovely, be fun when you go down a lovely and, weekend yeah, as well. Yeah. Nice low ceiling and a nice wee crowd. Uh, and I was trying stuff out as well. And you, there's a release in that kind of thing. And you you get to shout and you get to swear. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. More than you normally do in the yeah. life, you know. <laughs> and you get to you know, vent your spleen and stuff. But also with that, I was trying out new stuff. Because I, I, I don't do enough. I do bits and pieces. I do quite a few corporates and after dinners and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I know, because I tend to, if you can't make it, I tend to get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> you get my left yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm more than happy with that. <laughs> yeah, kind of the Meat Exporters Association of yeah. Ulster sort of thing. Right? <laughs> yeah. The Pipeline Industry Guild. That's what the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. That was the one. I've done that. that. Have you? I've done that. It was in the Merchant and uh, they were standing for it, but they were all at the back of the room. Right. And I'm like, you know, 50 feet uh, the other side of the room. And uh, they always go at those things. And they're always for the most niche things. Always go, do you have a wee bit about whatever yeah, it is they exactly. do? And you're like, no, I don't have a bit about chlorine. You know what I mean? I don't have a bit about chemicals. <laughs> yeah, I did one for the Crohn's Disease Association. Crohn's Disease? Why the fuck? I've got that. Why would I not be getting the what? book for that? I've, uh, got I've legitimately got Crohn's Disease. Why are they not booking me for that? Well... Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they also give me the worst introduction ever I've ever had at a gig. And I was standing at the back of the hall and there was a woman made a very impassioned speech about Crohn's disease and other diseases and how it affects your life and blah, blah, blah. Does, blah. Yeah. And she finished her speech and she shuffled her papers together and she looked down and went... <gasps> I think it's the comedian now. And then she walked off stage. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the fucking introduction. <laughs> I think it's a com- <laughs> so I went off and, and took the piss out of her and, and Crohn's disease and sick people for a long time. <laughs> went down very well. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Have you genuinely got I, Crohn's? I've got Crohn's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, you did that whole thing. Yeah, sick yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> the show, can I... Sorry, I just, the show... I just, the show, I just, the show I just, <laughs> The show is called Sick Bruno. Sick man. <laughs> what is it? Sick man. You know, like, uh, sick would be like a oh, modern yes, a young slang person, for like, young oh, bro, person. that's sick. Right, gotcha. <laughs> I don't want to be described as sick man. <laughs> I sound like the worst Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just fatigued. Right. That's my main superpower. It's just right. chilling on the sofa. Are, are you sick enough to have a DLA car? Or are you no, oh, but that's no, the dream. That's, that that's is, the dream. Like yeah, yeah. Well, I mean PAP now, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Different uh, yeah, no, I've got Crohn's disease. So if they if they are looking anyone to do it, I would say right. because I have it, I wouldn't do it for a fee. But I think I'd be looking for a more generous yeah. fee, you know, because I also have it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've got fucking ten minutes on. Crohn's disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, w- uh, corporate intros are some of the worst. And they, you know the way, if, if I'm bringing you on stage, you bring me, you know, you get it, you, you, for the name, you give it, Tim McGarry, yeah. you know, it's a wee bit of... Yeah, they, you lie they, first and say, this is a great friend of mine, he's brilliant and blah, blah, blah. He's the best she we could afford. Dog. That, they never go up, no, they just... No. Tim McGarry. <laughs> and then take ages to get off stage. There's any time people say... Will I go up and say something before me? I go, yeah, yeah, just say my name, and then you know you do give your speech after. I don't. The one of the worst ones I did was uh, sometimes it's because you're going on to such a cold room, or they don't know there's going to be stand up. I did one in Titanic, and they were going to have a raffle beforehand, so they said we're we're going to do a raffle. Will we do that before you or after? Will you do the raffle? And I said, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do it after my set. Did my set, didn't get a lot. Fifty minute set, didn't get a lot of laughs. Did the raffle, and then anyone who worked there was coming up to collect prizes. So as they came up, I was taking the piss a bit, having a bit of back and forth. That killed, that was like the yeah. highlight. So if I had done the raffle first, the stand up would have yeah. been great. But sometimes they're great. I'm cursed at slave honored. Any corporate event I do in slave honored. Uh is the worst and I don't know why yeah there are some hotels you go oh, I really don't want to be in this hotel uh, yeah but do, have, you, have you spoken to John Lennon May McFetrich John Le- I thought you said John Lennon was John Lennon <laughs> <laughs> yeah miss, uh, John, John, you know John yeah Lennon. yeah yeah not well but John I do know him yeah. uh, or Lennon or John, May, May's great great stories you know the way some corporates we were talking about corporates and the worst corporate you've ever done <laughs> he came out with this great line says I was once warmed up with a rat I go what <laughs> <laughs> says yeah I was doing a Gig. I was supposed to do a gig, I was supposed to be on stage, and just before I was about to be going on stage, a guy in woolly face said, There are here to make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> so they come out on stage and say, Shane Todd is 24 hours to leave a country. <laughs> Look, on Dave, you go with him too, Dave. If you don't stop with those drugs, I swear to God, we're told you, mate, how many times, Dave Elliott. 
Last warning, and now, May McFetters. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the, like, because we all do good gigs, we all do bad gigs, but what stands out as being, like, the worst time you've ever had on stage? Uh, I did a corporate, and I had to go away down to County Mayo to do it. Uh, for an English firm, which was run by a woman from Northern Ireland who knew me and liked me, uh, but it was for a bunch of English guys who came over from Leeds, and they'd been on a drunken weekend, and they wanted Roy Chubby Brown. Yeah, and they didn't want anything to do, certainly with Northern Ireland. Now I knew it wasn't. I wasn't going to do my. You know, they were all from Leeds. My Jim Allister gags. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Bryson. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. So I, you know, I tailored it to them. But they were all completely hammered and they really didn't want me. They wanted knob jokes and stuff. And I, I don't talk about my sex life because I don't like to boast and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I just, you know, I did about two minutes in, I thought this is the worst gig of my life. And they were really hate- They were quite aggressive about, you know, just really wanted me off. And I got pig-headed and I went, fuck you, I'm going to do my 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, just to annoy them. Planting the feet. Uh, and I was very lucky. There was a woman from Belfast and one other person with her who were laughing at me. And then there were, it wasn't a big gig. It was a well, very well paid gig. It wasn't a big gig. It was about 30 of them. Right. And they all hated me. Uh, and I just did it anyway. I did the 20, 25 minutes that I had to do. But then I was staying in the hotel and I couldn't avoid them. The next day they were all over the hotel going, fuck are you? You couldn't avoid And it's still scarred in my memory. Oh, God, no. So I, you know, know your audiences. Know your audiences. I, I, I like to like, you know, go in, go out for those gigs, not to hang about. Yeah. But like stay in a hotel with them. I can well, think of you, nothing worse. Yeah. I won't stay for a dinner ever. You don't? No, I don't. No, I, I get yeah. too nervous beforehand yeah. if I'm in the room for too long. I like to just arrive however long they want me there before, but like I like to be in pretty quick and then leave if possible. Yeah, no, I'm quite social. I don't mind sitting with them if they're, you know, I guess you get boring ones, but there's some of them, you, you get the chat to them and you can get a bit of biz. And, you yeah. Know, when, I, when I smoked, uh, I used to nick about the back and sneak a fag off people and get, you know, who's who, and you can get a couple of jokes off people, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't mind the corporate side. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't. I, I, I like them. I just have had some terrible ones. But then there's also some ones, some you do and go, this just feels like a gig. Yeah, Something exactly. really, really nice. Exactly. That's how you have to treat it. I mean, I think the table, a couple of the corporates, half the audience aren't there to see you. They haven't paid to see you. They don't know if something, most of the time they don't even know you're on. Yeah, yeah. And they go, oh, and they go, oh fuck, I never like giving my headpiece anyway. And now you've got to listen to him for 25 yeah. minutes, you know. Um, but, you know, you can you can have really nice corporates. You can. Have you ever had real bad backlash to a joke? Like, have you ever had... Um, <coughs> Uh, a threat or oh, something, yeah. come, something come down the, the, the line to you, like uh, occasionally. Yes. Because you're, you're, you're way, over the years in the blame game, you're bound to, have, you know, you make jokes about paramilitaries or political situations and that sort of thing. So, yeah, we did a joke in two ceasefires in a wedding with the very first one, right back in '95. Which was so was that a spin-off of Give My Headpiece? That was the, the pilot show for Give My Headpiece, Two Ceasefires in a Wedding. It was the very first one, and right. it was about I played Dan. I was my daughter was marrying a peeler, so I was ringing Jerry Adams and the radical. Could we break the ceasefire? Because I'm very angry. And then I <laughs> rang the NLA. <laughs> I said, "Rang the NLA. So do you still on ceasefire?" I said, "Yeah, we're done. Can now we break the ceasefire? No, no, we can't." I said, "Is that the position of both of you?" <laughs> 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 Jackie Hamilton, who lives in Derry, then for a week later says, uh, I've had a word, somebody rang me, who's <laughs> close to the thinking of the INLA. <laughs> says, One says, of the two rang says, you. Tell Tim McGarry there's more than two of us. And we're all... Oh, <laughs> That's <laughs> not what you want there's to hear. More than, there's more than two <laughs> There's <of> three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But apart from that, we haven't re- we, we, we had a, a sketch that went wrong on our TV show in 1996 that caused a bit of hassle, but a bit of a backlash that... Yeah. Why did it go wrong? Can you talk about it? It's okay if you don't want to say. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Let's not. <laughs> uh, let's just say we lost a few GAA clubs over it. <laughs> and, that, and they're good corporates? They, well, they are good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. David Hull, our, our agent's quite good. Uh, GAA clubs are the worst ones for paying you in cash, right? And then they'll, they'll have a bundle of cash and they'll, go, they'll give you a favour and go, weren't many in tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit disappointed by the crowd. <laughs> I've had a guy. Favor and then go, thought the bar would do a lot better, you know. Yeah. Which is. I've, I've had a guy give me half in cash. And bear in mind, it was 100 quid. Give me 50 quid and go, might have to write you a check for this other 50. He goes, <laughs> he goes 
the wife won't be happy with me. And I was like, okay, write it. And then he wrote it. And genuinely, about a year later, this guy's a stand-up, divorced. So he kind of was right. Your fault. He kind of was right. Has, uh, has like, coming out of lockdown and been able to, like, be... Because, well, you didn't stop... You're maybe one of the only people that didn't really stop making stuff. You were doing radio and TV. But has it, uh, has it made you want to do anything different? Like, has it spawned any ideas for TV or, or things where you go, I want to do this? Well, we were, we, we hate to say it, we had quite a good lockdown because we were able to do Give Me Head Peace, socially distanced in a, in a warehouse out in Kilroot. We were able to do, uh, and then we played it to an audience, the cinema, where instead of doing it in the studio in front of 300 people like we normally do, we built a bigger set and all of that. And oh. Jim Cray had his two metres stick outs, so we all had to be two metres apart. Right. We were able to do that, did the radio show. But I, yeah, because of a bit of time, I have a couple of other wee things that I love doing. I do a history show with a guy called David Schum of the Orange Order called The Long and the Short of It, which is a brilliant title for a radio show, or for a TV show, because I'm six foot four and he's four foot nothing. On the radio, it makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> it makes no sense. People go, why just call The Long and the Short of It? <laughs> Until you see a photograph, you go, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and because of the centenary and we were mucking about and stuff, so we're doing a couple of live versions of that, which is kind of a, a sort of half stand-up, half lecture, half row. <laughs> Right. Gig, which I'm really enjoying uh, and we, uh, we've we done loads of these at series and we, we got to do another one and it's just talking about controversial moments of Irish history and having a row which is great crack. People are uh, are like the centenary is a weird thing isn't it because it's it's so divisive to even just say yeah. this like people don't want to know they're like no it's not a hundred years and it's like <laughs> it is but it's not it's, no one's saying it. I'm not saying it's good or it's bad yeah. but it is a hundred years since Northern Ireland was like formed if you want to people are like no no they just can't it, like the centenary it's just yeah. it's yeah, the it's, most divisive thing well, yeah and I, I, I even got a, a bit of jip for doing this thing with David Hume for even marketing and going well it's it happened it's history I like yeah. talking about history you know but uh, yeah. I'm young and I'm old enough to remember Ulster 71 of course you wouldn't remember that they had a massive thing about uh, Ulster 70 uh, to celebrate 50 years of Northern Ireland right got a big, it's supposed to be a big festival and there was a fun fair and there was an exhibition and all that and there. was this in 1971 this, 1971 and the, the big ads Ulster 71 one, come and join the fun. Unfortunately, slightly under will, uh, undermined by the fact that civil war was breaking. <laughs> I saw a D-list civil war, not a proper civil war. Yeah, like it was yeah, a bit yeah. of a crap effort in yeah. civil war. But we were murdering each other in huge numbers, and this kind of thing just you know. Who was on? Every now and again, you get the news. What? Do you remember who was on? We, on we got clips of it for the show we did. Uh, Pop goes Northern Ireland. There was Gloria Honeyford and sort of things. And, uh, uh, Gloria Honeyford singing. Gloria Honeyford was a singer. Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, and there was a proper sort of exhibition and then the massive fun fair, I think, in Botanic Gardens and stuff. But it was kind of the news, so and so, and shot the day. Anyway, Ulster 71, come and join the fun. <laughs> and it sort of undermines think, anything that's happened that yeah, day. Exactly. <laughs> so they're not, you know, Northern Ireland's is not great at anniversaries. No, know. no, no. Uh, did you watch Kildy's documentary? I did, yeah. I thought I, it was brilliant. Yeah, I, I thought the one he did before as well. Was, yeah, yeah. He, I thought it was even better than the one he did, but I thought, yeah, no, Kildy's been great. And uh, he's... The one he did before we interviewed Arlene and Arlene said she would leave <laughs> if there was a United Ireland and all that. Everyone that said, no one who says that has ever left. Yeah. Nobody leaves. Who, yeah. who do you know from here that's left? Yeah. You don't leave. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you can't leave. You can't leave. <laughs> no, it's not great. Even if you want to. <laughs> but you do get people who are like, yeah, you know, I think I'm think we're going to move if things get. No one has ever moved yeah. for anything yeah. other than like a new job or yeah. whatever. Uh, no, I thought kilty has been great. I think he's been really good. And he's it a big brilliant. advocate of integrated education. As I know you are too. Yeah, and stuff yeah. and done the integrated education gigs. And he was very good. And that was to a network audience as well to say, listen, come on, look at where we are here. You know? Do you know who uh, who I would love to get on the podcast? Speaking of integrated education, May Blood. Baroness ah, May Blood. The, the, the great Baroness May Blood. Some she, woman. She, because uh, I went to see, uh, we talked to this before, but you, you, there was a stand up night for integrated, integrated education at the Ulster Hall. And it was you and, and Jake. And Colin and a few others, and and Mayblood gave like a talk at the start. Yeah, and was funnier than everyone. She's fucking hilarious. <laughs> she devastated the place, like just like dead serious, but ruthless. I can't remember what she said, but just the place is in stitches. Yeah. Like she has some some I think stories. She told to she stops wearing and all that blue stuff. Yeah, and all that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'd I'd, I'd love to get her on. Um, you've got a new show for Radio Ulster, and it's about music. I didn't for some reason. 
I, I didn't know you were into music. I'm not, I'm not really, but this is an odd show. It's called Criminal Records, which is kind of a reverse Desert Island Discs where you don't come on and talk about music you love, but it's music that you hate. Right, right, so right. So it's kind of the worst song when you were a child. When I was a child, the worst song that me and my brother were made to sing Two Little Boys by Rolf Harris, <laughs> which you're not allowed to sing now for various other reasons, but it was very fashionable <laughs> at the time. Uh, the worst lyrics. It's almost like he was trying to tell us something. The, the worst form of music, you know, whether you like hip-hop or jazz or something. Uh, the worst gig you were ever at. The so what What music do you hate? Uh, I hate freeform jazz. Lenny said. Yeah. You're very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a, it was in Edinburgh a, few, a long, long time ago. We went to a jazz club and there was a guy and they played the for 20 minutes and then they stopped and said, that's our version of Bye Bye Blackbird. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> no it was nothing like where was the black thing <laughs> nothing like anything it was nothing it was just you know, just made this up as you go along I think jazz has to be the best kind it has to be like yeah. the top level is okay in my yeah. eyes you know yeah. I don't know what music guy my dad had two he, great jokes my dad had a great <laughs> two, there was a jazz musician who died and he was a jazz trumpeter or something or whatever my dad used to say, I see him, uh, great man, great musician. Too. Never played the same tune once. <laughs> 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 and his other, he was into classical. He got me into classical music when I was quite young. <laughs> and he's, his other great joke that he loved, he said, see, Wagner, he said, Wagner's music is much better than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Wagner did a birthday message for my mate. Is that what do you mean, Bag- <laughs> do you mean Wagner what, from what, X Factor? The cycle. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant Wagner from no! X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> right of the Valkyries. <laughs> did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Wagner did a ring. <laughs> no, I'm thinking. You're Wagner. talking about Wagner. The, you're like Wagner's yeah, the, the best of all time. All right, okay. All right, okay. Uh, I don't know what music. I, I I think I'm at the stage. You know the stage where you stop listening to Radio One and you you go yeah. to more Radio Two. Yeah, it a long time ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. at that point. So like modern music, I but so much modern music is just old songs with like a bit of a dance beat behind it now it's as if they've now run out of music but maybe every generation thinks that well absolutely I mean I think music stopped when the Smiths broke up in 1985 or whatever right Ian Curtis committed suicide. That was kind of what we were. You, you went. To, I, I saw you somewhere recently. You said you were going to see Fontaine's DC. Oh, what a brilliant band! Cool. They were brilliant. Yeah, yeah it was really, good. Yeah, really good. Do was, you get like say at that gig where there's loads of young people? Like, will you get a bit? Of, will you get a bit of flack? Will you get a bit? Not flack, but will you get a bit of photos yeah, and selfies? Yeah, a lot, and that a sort of, lot thing? of a lot of photos and a lot of selfies and all of that. Yeah, yeah. And I had to blag my way into the VIP area, which is basically the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only twenty people in the queue for the bog, and so as opposed to fifty, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, like music. Uh, I didn't realize how much I miss music till I went to see yeah. Jerry Cinnamon a couple of weeks ago, and I've seen a few gigs since, and it's. It's so good. When you go and see a good live music gig, there's nothing better. Yeah. It's yeah. brilliant. Well, that's, I mean, I, my first ever gig was I went to see the Tom Robinson band in 1978, who was supported by Stiff Little Fingers. Oh, yeah, I know that. The Whitla Hall. You never heard of the Tom Robinson band? No. Oh, heard of Stiff Little Fingers? Her Power in the Darkness. Look up Power in the Darkness, the album Power in the Darkness with the Tom Robinson band from 1978. Were they what, they're local? No, 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 no. Because I know Stiff Little Fingers. Sing, were. You ever heard of Sing if you're glad to be gay? You never heard that song? Sing no. Gay, Tom, Ro- Jeez, Sing if you're glad to be gay. Young people today. Young people today. I mean, day. it could it could be the anthem of they- the podcast, but um, <coughs> but Stiff, my mate went to see Stiff Little Fingers in a car park in Bambridge. They were doing a concert, and he said they played uh, Alternative Ulster four times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good song, no. but I don't know the that good. <laughs> yeah. What was the, the first gig I went to see is actually a pretty impressive one. Do you find a lot of people lie about their music preferences and gigs they saw, yeah. where like you might have gone to see someone quite shit, so you'll forget that and you'll wait until the best the best first gig you went to see and then say that. My first gig genuinely was Elton John, Stormont. Right. It was really Stormont. good. At Stormont, yeah. He did, uh, he did sing if you're gay. Uh, he did that one, <laughs> which was good. Uh, it was, was brilliant. The 90s or something. Yeah, yeah, I was right. a kid. And do you know why I thought it was unreal? Because The Lion King had just come out and he did the soundtrack. So I was, I was a huge Elton John fan. Uh, but it was, it was brilliant. It was a good first gig to go to. Yeah. I was a kid. And then the Lighthouse family, I was, I'm a bit of a rocker. I like the mosh bit. So I went to see the Lighthouse family <laughs> in, uh, in King's Hall. And it was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. Uh, I had a mate who was really into music when I was young, and I ended up, uh, I went to see U2 in the Ulster Hall when the 1978, just after the Boy album came out, and it was 
third fool. So it's one of those, yeah, we, we, we were there when we were there when they were cool yeah. and nobody knew who they were and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, I've been to see some shit bands as well. What's, what, do you have, you have any good guests coming on the show? Yeah, we have uh, a fantastic guest. We have uh, Carl Frampton. We have uh, the Queen of Country herself, Philomena Begley. Genuinely, I thought you were just going to say the Queen. I thought you were just going <laughs> to leave it there. I was like, that's a great guest. What was your first we're gig? working on that. <laughs> we're working on her. <laughs> first, yeah. first gig, The yeah. Darkness. The criminal and, uh, Records, the song she hates. God save the Queen if she hears it one more <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> These stiff little fingers four times a month, every fucking day, everywhere she goes. <laughs> it's not even a good tune, you know. No, it is a good At the start uh, of it's good. Ah, uh, come bum, on. Bum, bum. No, I like the start Land of, of Hope and Glory or something. Give it, you. Give it the welly. <laughs> Stiff little fingers. Uh, yeah, they were. I found out about this band, and I unfortunately I can't remember what they're called. But they're like a worship band, like so. I presume that's a Christian music, and they're from Bangor. And I I sent a message asking them on the podcast like a couple of days ago. They're called the Something Collective or something. It begins with R, and uh, they they were they're doing. You've the a SM. man looking this up now. Yeah, you yeah, have dancing a team up. behind yeah. you. There's a the, they're doing the SSE Arena because I was looking at my right. show and I saw this band and I thought, oh, that the Ren Collective, Ren. right? These guys I think are from Bangor. See their videos, twenty million, thirty million. Right. They're doing SSE and they're because they're a worship band, like you right. know, American, heathens like American. us wouldn't have heard of them. Right. But they're they're huge. Well, they're well, from Bangor. Yeah, it's probably an American market there. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Are they any good? I mean, lyrics, I think if you're... The lyrics are a bit predictable, are they? The, they like God, I think. <laughs> there's a lot of, like, I think, reading between the lines of their music, they think God's a pretty cool guy. Oh, yeah, right, uh, okay. Yeah, they like him. Jesus, he's good. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's in there as well. Everything's great. <laughs> a lot of smiling. Phil, what was Phil Amina Begley's song, Blanket on the Ground? Yeah, among well, many others. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. That, that's... She's nearly thing. 80. And right. she's woman is, uh, yeah, and she's still going. And she's uh, she's been in the business nearly 60 years. Uh, and she had some great stories. She's got a great. Story. Somebody died during a gig. She was somebody. Well, she was singing. Oh God, I can't remember the name of the song. Right? Somebody went and died in the middle of the gig. Right, right, right. <laughs> Not <laughs> ideal. Not ideal. <laughs> but they kept going. Didn't yeah. stop. Totally professional. <laughs> Just jived her out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was like a comedy gig. How to go really killed tonight? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really killed. <laughs> So I have a, a card from that I've uh, I'd Colin Murray who was brilliant as well, really really good, uh, and I had Peggy Lee, the actor from yeah. Peaky Blinders. Blinders. I had Marissa Callahan, the captain football. of the Northern Ireland football team, captain yeah. of Cliftonville as well, brilliant, real yeah. woman, um, and uh, I had Holly Hamilton, the TV yeah. presenter and stuff. When you um, when you started doing Give My Head piece, did you? I've always wanted to ask you, did you know when you and when you started doing those pilots you were talking about? Did you know that that would be successful, or was there a feeling of like this is going to be what it has become, which is, you know, this really long running uh, institution type show? No, <laughs> sure, it's a sure. Two ceasefires in a wedding was was the one off. Well, originally the idea was this is a piss take of all the bad Northern Ireland plays and films and stuff that there were about Northern Ireland of people with dodgy accents, usually English actors, and it was a piss take of all of that. And it was essentially a one off. Right. And it was Martin Lynch, the playwright, who was talking to my two colleagues, Damon and Michael, one time over a pint. He said, you know you've created a sitcom there. He said, what do you mean? You've got two families in a sitcom and characters and they're larger than life. It's a fucking sitcom. Well, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we eventually pitched it to the BBC and we did one series and it did all right. Didn't do brilliantly. It took until the second or third series before it went from... It did, did well. Didn't know, I mean, it was getting 20, 30%. And then it just went vump like that. Uh, and I was getting sort of ridiculous figures, getting over 50%. It was beating these standards and stuff like that. And I was being chased around in supermarkets by kids and stuff. You know, that was just mental. Thankfully, it's that way around. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those days are gone, yeah. <laughs> Come into my trolley. No, I... <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, no, but it was totally unexpected. In fact, the first series went well and the babe came to us and said, we think there's another six here. Do you think there's another six? And we went, oh, 100%, six, oh, six more. Mm -hmm. And then we went in the room and went, oh, we've, we've written all the jokes. We've yeah. done all the stories. That's all there is. There is no more. Like, Jesus, how are we going to yeah. do this? But then you get into the groove of it and you get into the groove of writing a sitcom and writing it, ha having it 
uh, plot structure and having the, the dialogue was actually quite easy because the characters we, we knew so well. Yeah. It was the plot structure and we had a really good uh, script editor who was really good at going, uh, there's four lines, there's no joke, give me a joke and blah, 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 and suggesting jokes as well. A guy called Niall Leonard, brilliant guy, and you won't know Niall, but you'll know his wife because he's married to Erica Leonard James. He is Mrs. He's Mr. Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, His okay. wife is Erica Leonard. Yeah, Does she have a connection to here? She, she's English, but she married him and lived in Belfast. Oh, okay. He's from Newry. Well, he's from Enniskill and Ray, but he lived in Newry and uh, then took up with Erica and they lived in Belfast for several years. And he was a script editor in BBC Northern Ireland when we were starting. And uh, she they, she worked in television production and then did the writing on the side, kind of. And then was that the, link when you heard they were making the Fifty Shades of Grey in in the books in the movies? Did you consider getting on the phone to him? I, and saying, I said hello. You yeah, know? yeah. And if you've met Niall Leonard, you know uh, Christian Grey, billionaire, you know man with a sex dungeon. Not really Niall Leonard. Right. I? <laughs> 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 He's from Newry, and I go, El James. She ha- she deserves every single penny. Like she has some imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met this guy? <laughs> she has met. The- <laughs> you- Niall is a good friend, a really good friend of ours, and you know we we, we knew her vaguely, and you know we'd met her a couple of times and stuff. Yeah. But he was he he worked on about six or seven of our series, and we'd send him a script. And he'd come back two days later and he'd read, he'd go, that's not working. But he, what he did was brilliant as a script. He suggested other jokes. Yeah. You know, and he suggested stuff and you went, okay. And you could reject it as well. He'd go, no, I don't agree with that. Yeah. And all that. But he was just brilliant. And then suddenly he stopped taking her calls. <laughs> and go, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> He's probably in a dungeon though. <laughs> he, t- he tells a great story about Eric. I was writing bits and pieces for, and you know, it was doing okay. But he was, he, was a, he was a script editor. He was writing stuff for the BBC and bits and bobs. And his two kids at university, and he was fighting with the BBC, and they weren't paying him and all that. And Erica came in to him and said, I'm going to give up my job and go full time at the writing. And said, For a second, his, his brain went, Oh, for fuck's sake, it's the last fucking thing I need when I'm two fucking kids at university. And she's going to fucking give up her fucking job. <laughs> and he said, Thankfully, my brain went, Erica, that's a great idea. I fully support you. <laughs> He said six months later, he said, not six, it's six months later, she was top of the New York bestseller list. Oh, incredible. Yeah. And then he, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, he, funny enough, he, he and Eric do bits and pieces for the uh, Integrated Education Fund, and I met them at one of the do's in London. Brilliant. So solid, down to earth, brilliant, brilliant people. Brilliant people. Did you have many, did you have pushbacks for a lot of the stuff you were writing at the time from like BBC and stuff like that? Like a, a lot of the jokes that we're in, was there a lot of like, because nah, it's a minefield anyway. Yeah, yeah. But w- w- did it change, say, for example, when you started to get my headpiece, the jokes you were allowed to get in, over time were you allowed to get more in because they trusted you a bit more? Yeah, exactly. It, it, they, they, after a few series, they, they were very nervous at the start and they always were. Uh, yeah. But this this happens all the time. We we did we did a gig for the, for the PSNI very early. They asked us to do a thing for Peelers. It was quite controversial at the time. Well, we've had no problem. I like the peelers, you know. If you know any peelers, you're the darkest sense of humour in the world, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the first time we did it, Hugh Ord was the chief constable, and he said, I want to see the script a week in advance. A week in advance, okay. Sent us the script, and he took a few lines out and did it there. And then we did it in front of an audience, and then we and he realised he went, ah, right, okay, they know where the line is. Yeah. You know, they know where the line is. You know what? You we're not going to be offensive. To, you know, we're going to push it as well because people like that in Northern yeah. Ireland they like you to push it up to the close to the line with television it's completely different you've got script editors you've got lawyers you've got all sorts of things but they now trust us we have a legal background as well so we know we haven't been actually been sued if somebody threatened to sue us recently I can't talk about it <laughs> but we haven't been sued in, uh, ever at all you know for, for libel can we or do like, like a, that but a, we, can we do like a real life game of guess who so if I set up, <laughs> does this person have glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Uh, no. We don't. <laughs> I think I know who it is. <laughs> um, see what you're saying about like, you know, BBC could be like quite worried about things. Well, me and Dave were doing the rave lockdown, so playing yeah. dance music on Friday nights uh, in lockdown. One of the shows fell on Good Friday, right? And I, I don't even know really what good for I know it's a religious thing but I don't know what it is or what it signifies we had to read out a disclaimer at the start of the show and say um welcome to the rave lockdown we're aware it's good friday so if this show isn't for you 
feel free to switch off and do something else. I was like, by playing like Sash, Ecuador and Scooter, how are we disrespecting God? You know what I mean? Like we're not, it's not like we're playing sata- a satanic mix. Well, you know, it's, we're playing commercial dance music. Like, what well, Christians are going to be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing anything wrong. Yeah, you, well, you see, the Good Friday people take seriously because that's the day Jesus was put the cross and all of that, and stations of the cross and all that. Yeah. That's the day uh, that you, they, they used to close all the bars and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know what you are. You've just been disrespectful. You know, no, I knew. <laughs> just been disrespectful. I, 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 I know don't it's do a religion, th- but you know, I, think I know it's a thing. Fucked off the radio for that. Just, <laughs> it's okay, I have it. been. <laughs> <But> it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> did the memo get through? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know that's the exact day it was. I didn't know it was the day he went on the cross. Right. I just knew it was did like. Did you a go sim- to school at all? Did you like? Uh, <laughs> Not a lot. Did, 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things to remember just in general there's so many things to remember like Good so Friday many, yeah but you know there's the Easter day Easter Sunday why do we have Easter Sunday I don't know Easter eggs what? well that's a day that's a day he had a, a big dinner that's why you have Easter Sunday but but there's like the day he came out of the cave and there's all this birthday and it's a lot of days so I just knew it was a religious day but no I wasn't like a School guy, if you want to call right, it that. Okay. Wasn't like a learning type <laughs> you guy. You not? No, no. <laughs> I like PE. Academic? No, 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 not academic. I like PE and stuff, and I, I, I did get a degree, but uh, that's just from the streets. <laughs> university the bad of, streets of Hollywood. University of life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I learned some things the in Hollywood. East side of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lower yeah. East side. The bad side of the tracks. There's no bad side of the tracks in Hollywood. <laughs> Even the bad side of the tracks is fucking lovely. <laughs> it's, it's nice on the bad side of the tracks. <laughs> Where did you grow up, Tim? Uh, North Belfast, uh, Antrim Road, North Belfast. Have you stayed there? Very boring. I'm a very boring man with a very boring life. I've I think moved, I'm boring too. No, I've. Moved four times in a radius of 500 yards. <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> like that house there. And they go over there and go, oh, that one there. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it, you know. I like North But Belfast genuinely, places. do you think yourself as like a relatively boring guy? Because I, I'm I'm yeah. I think I'm quite oh, a dull I'm, guy. I'm incredibly dull, yeah. yeah. And because I, I don't, you, I meet people who I'm like, that person's really exciting. But the things that make me happy are very simple yeah. things. Yeah, watching football like 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 oh, so. yeah, football. Cup of tea, crossword, cup of tea, online chess. I'm no good at crosswords. Online chess, I do. I online it. chess. Yeah, I've got into that. Yeah. Have you? Um, when I one of the coolest things I ever saw was we were in Miami and in Little Havana. You know the Cuban area they have there. They all the men meet in like a square and actually play chess. Yeah. And I thought that was class. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I can barely play drafts, so I was watching them going, <laughs> "That's impressive." Yeah, I, I, I would never be able to learn chess. And someone will go, I could teach you. You couldn't. I, my, I, I couldn't yeah. learn chess. Well, I was in the nerdsville. You know, I wasn't very sporty at school. You know, I liked sport. I liked football, but I was no good at it. Uh, I was last to get picked, even if I brought the ball, you know. So. <laughs> school, they're my jumpers. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last to get picked. So I hung around with the nerds. So I was in the chess club and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was quite useful for a bit. And then I realized I was being, I was about 12, 13. I was being beaten by seven-year-olds who'd never seen grass, but they knew the Nimzo Indian defence and, you know, the English gambit inside out, you know. And their fathers were standing beside them rubbing their hands going, he's going to be a grandmaster. So I, I entered a few competitions, but gave it up. But I was kind of hanging around with the nerds and ended up in sort of the acting and the, rather than the sporty you know, world. Chess, no, I, I love, there's so many things I love the idea of. Yeah. But I could never do it. Like, I, I honestly wouldn't have the ability to ever play chess. Well, that was, would give me great satisfaction in beating an idiot like you. Because <laughs> the point of chess <laughs> is to beat people. <laughs> yeah, no. And it is the only game where there's no chance. If I beat you at chess, it's because I'm smarter than you are. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Fair. The trouble is when I'm online chess, I'm, I'm brilliant and then I'm a complete fucking idiot. We're all within a space of five minutes. You could just say, oh, my yeah. computer rebooted itself. Yeah. Just switch it off. Online through. chess and Chardonnay do not mix by the way, yeah, the gen- is yeah. that what you do? You yeah. pop Chardonnay? Oh, yeah, have a wee couple of glasses and you go, ah, I'm a genius. And you're, ah, I'm- <laughs> Tim, I'm getting a real, a real glimpse into your private life. And do you use the glass or just don't swing from the bottom? Oh, no, it's just uh, flagging. I think it's, 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 as long as you're staying out of those shopping centres, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, what are you going to do, like uh, the long short of attack? Are you going to tour touring that? Or you are we to- are, we're doing a sort of mini tour, yeah. We've been to, uh, where were we? We were in Derry, we're in the Apprentice Boys at Derry Hall in Derry uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was great, really good. 
good fun. And then we were in the Stormont Hotel, part of the Eastside Arts Festival, and we're all over the place. I think we're in Armagh and the Lyric and, and the Skill and stuff. D- Derry's a great place to Derry, get. I put, love put it. A, like, I'll get a link for the tour. We'll put it in the bio for this description. Derry is a great place to gig, but I just wish they could make it a bit closer. Yeah. It's just the Glen yeah. Pass doesn't work for me. It doesn't. Sorry. Yeah, they're getting rid of it. They're trying to get, go oh, around yeah? it, aren't they, or something? They're making it's it quicker. fucking grim, the Glen Chain Pass. Once you get there, it's always a... Gr- Derry, yeah. and it's, Derry's like a comedy city as well. Like, people like stand-up. Yeah. Um, I just headlined the uh, Gas Yard Fela Festival, me and Jerry Adams. Um, <laughs> uh, not like a duo type thing. He was doing a different event. Um, but uh, but it was it was brilliant. Yeah. It was good. No, I love it. I love Derry. We, we, funny, our last, last year we were on Give Me Head Peace Tour. Our last three shows were in the Millennium and Derry. Yeah. And then we did one more in our man and it all it went to crap. But they were literally with our last three just before the lockdown were in the Millennium and Derry. And it's it was, a great, I opened for oh, Kinty there. It's stunning. It's, it's brilliant. Beautiful yeah. when it's full. It's just lovely. And Derry people are, yeah, they're, I mean, they're a bit odd. Yeah, I mean, I think, and you think everyone who's not from where you're from is a bit odd, but yeah. like, but they're like, you know, they because I, well, I was told by a dairy person, there are two types of dairy people dairy people who think dairy is the center of the universe, and dairy people who think it's the arsehole in nowhere and can't wait to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think there is two. I think there's dairy people who think it's the center of the universe, and dairy people who fucking are very angry that you don't think it's the center yeah, of the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, like, here's the thing, Tim, I like to go to Nando's before a gig. Right. Just a wee ritual of mine. It's it's sort of quick food. I like it. And n- dairy has a Nando's, but it's never busy. Right. And that's what I, I... I find that weird that why it's a big city. Uh, but I like that you can just slip in there and then go to a gig. Right. That's and just it's my never ritual. busy in dairy. The Nando's is just, it just hasn't taken off. Like you say, there you know there can be maybe a bit weird. Maybe there's established chicken places where right. people are going, no, uh, this is where I get my chicken from. Just right. to maybe don't like trying new things. Okay, yeah, okay. I don't, would you would you would you go for an Andrews with me sometime? Uh, no, I don't. Really, uh, before a gig? No, yeah. I know. Do you I not like to eat don't, before I a gig? Don't, don't eat before a gig. I can't no. understand that. I feast before a gig. Really? Yeah. No, no, no. I can't. No, I, can I eat do eat like a King a Henry the Eighth like <laughs> banquet. <laughs> I'll have big chicken legs and no, no, mead. No, no. <laughs> David I, Mead. No. Yeah, I, I, I just, just <laughs> <laughs> niche joke there, but <laughs> <coughs> no, I, 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 I not, not, not that I don't smoke anymore. I don't smoke before, but I usually had, had used to smoke quite a lot before gigs, and then uh, the odd pint. But no, I can't really eat. I need to kind of. Do you get nervous? I'm always nervous. I'm always. Do nervous. I get nervous? It, it it depends. If I've played the venue before, um, I'll be less nervous. Like I did Lavery's a couple of nights ago. I'll get zero percent nerves, but I think that's because I know I've worked on the material. You know, I'm I'm not winging it. If I'm winging something, I'll get really nervous. But if I've worked on the material and I know my set list, I get way less nervous and I feel comfortable on that stage. But if I go somewhere I've never been before, sure. I can get nervous. But there's no there's no like in between. From I'm either not nervous at all or I'm massively nervous. Right. I don't okay. think for if these shows. Uh, you know, happen, and I hope they will when they do happen, for Waterfront, because I did that last time, I, don't, I think I'll be a bit nervous, but not that nervous, but then for SSE, not just because of the scale of it, because I've never been on that stage, I think I'll be more nervous yeah. for that. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I hate comedians who aren't nervous at all. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's annoying. Yeah, for three years, <laughs> for about three, four years, my hand shook. Yeah, I've literally been standing backstage in the uh, Grand Opera House with Neil Delamere, Chatting away, chatting away, chatting away. And I said, no, Neil Delamere. And he went, all oh, right, some more. And he walked on yeah, stage. And he went, no. Nah. Just, just, just like probably proper chat in the middle of a, like, a, a yeah. conversation sort of chat. And nah. Go, no, no, why are you not pacing up and down? And going, what's my order and where am I going? What's, what am I starting with? And blah, one, th- one thing I hate is when comedians run, mat- like your mates run material by you before you go on stage because yeah. you're thinking about their material then as well. I like to just, I like I'm to going, relax, but have yeah, a bit going, of my own time. It's better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to go and use it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you've got that tour coming, and then with Get My Head Piece, will you, you will you tour that again? Yeah, like we're in, hoping like soon. To, like yeah, we're, we're I think we're booked in the new Opera House in end of March, end of March, early April. Uh, I've got a sneak preview of the Opera House, but uh, the the work they've done is stunning, absolutely stunning. It's going to be a brilliant, brilliant venue. I'm hoping again. to do something. It really there. is gorgeous, and they've redone the entire uh, added on bit, the annex, you know, redone all the bars and stuff because it was a bit of a mess. Uh, and it's beautiful. Really, I've done really the beautiful. Opera House once, in a way, oh, and it was with you. Oh, it's not, it's it was good. with you, it do you remember is this? The, It is the, the best venue to do comedy in Northern Ireland. Were you with me? Yep. 
in a way, I was technically I performed. Do you remember there was a Christmas gig about 12 years ago that Jackie was running? Oh, right, yeah. And do you remember it was hosted by the Toll Trolls? Yes! Who were uh, two Southern DJs. puppet things. <laughs> Comedians from Dublin did a radio show, had these things, and they talked like they were on helium. Yeah. And uh, they did like naughty accents, which for some reason I hate that word. Yeah. Not that it offends me in any way, I just hate the yeah. sound of the word naughty. Yeah. But anyway, um, they were emceeing these gigs, but in big real life troll suits. But they were doing the voices from up the top of the arena and they needed two people to be in the suits. And I had the flu, it was Christmas, like 13 years ago. I had the flu and Jackie phoned me and said, we need 50 quid, we need someone to stand in a troll outfit and be on the stage in the opera house. And I said to my dad, I remember like being in a Lucas aid and going, dad, I'm about to play the opera house. And I, I think I bashed out like five press ups, got him a Corsa, went straight to the opera house and uh, we were just in these suits and every once in a while you had to move our arms and you were performing great lineup and John Bishop John Bishop, yeah, John Bishop headlined and uh, I, I was I had the flu inside this suit but it was like I was buzzing to just be on the stage and we were walking off as John Bishop walked on and uh, George Quinn was the other troll George right, Quinn was in oh the yeah. suit so he walked off first then me and I thought ah I'll interact with John Bishop for a while I mean I've just met John Bishop so I got like the troll hand in my costume and went for a high five as I walked off the stage with John Bishop who thought it would be like funny to like you know pretend to like punch the troll but he did right but he thought that he thought the suit was thick enough to absorb it but the suits were like he didn't know the suit the face of it was like that thin so I went for the high five I'm like ill inside I'm like there's John Bishop's great went to get my high five he's clocked me on the nose and it's like it's near it's near sparked me out and I remember walking off the stage like feeling the effects of the flu I think my nose might have been bleeding a bit. I was like, "This my John Bishop might have broke my nose," and he just started his set. And, uh, and I, but I got and everybody laughed, out, so it was good. Everybody laughed. Uh, and you didn't sue him when you're going to. Your I might now. You, you do, yeah. I might now. Traumatized and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I might sue him now. Uh, Tim, cheers for coming on. You're very welcome. Pleasure, yeah, abs- absolute pleasure. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll put the the link for the tour in the in the description for this. Thank you. Uh, yeah, our Criminal Records is starting on Radio Ulster. 10th of October or something, yeah. Yeah, Dan's not, yeah, yeah. 10th yeah. of October. Okay, and uh, Barry's tea, I am available. Tim, <laughs> cut him off. I am available. Nordy's, Nordy's selling tea up in the north, aye. Tim, see you ever soon, yeah. I'm, I'm going to foot the bill. <laughs> 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 Cheers, thanks, Tim. Thanks, shit. Yeah.